creating cultural awareness and understanding. This is Culture Click. Culture Click is written and produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. Some cars have been around longer than we've all been alive. Some of those cars have been well kept and taken care of. Over time, a lot of these cars become antiques and worth a pretty penny. We take you to Remlinger's Collect the Car Auction in Goodview, Minnesota, where cars are auctioned off to the highest bidder. I'm Ventures Heron, and you'll be joined by KQAL 89.5 Giovanni Bermudez at the car auction for this week's episode of Culture Click on 89.5 KQAL. Inside the car show, there were several individuals ready to take part in the bidding. Around us, there were several signs from ages past. Some road signs, others from mechanics, all with a sense of car culture and automotive history. A 1998 calendar page by Michael Jordan, signed by Michael Jordan. This is crazy! A small town in Minnesota has all these one-of-a-kind artifacts. People are all competing to get their hands on one. All right, we'll just start with your name and uh, what you're doing here at the auction. Hi, my name's Cliff Black, and I'll be driving these collector cars across the block for auction. There are a number of us here uh, that have volunteered for this, and um, it's a very exciting thing because we get to drive a broad variety of amazing cars, some of them very old, some of them more recent, a lot of them are hot rods, but they're all classics. What would you say is your favorite thing you've driven at the, sh- at the show, or is this your first time doing it? Oh, no, this is, I've done it before. Gosh, that's a tough one to call uh, because there are imported sports cars, and then there are the usual, usual American uh, muscle cars. Gosh, it's a, it's a toss-up, I guess. Maybe a, a Camaro Z28 or maybe an Austin Healey 3000. Why those specifically? Well, because they are they sort of run the gamut from the little imported cars to the big American muscle cars. And, you know, I like them all. But, you know, there's another bunch of cars here that are not even in that category. A 1931 Model A Ford is an exciting thing to drive because, you know, it's, you know, it's 85, 90, it's 92 years old, and it's still running. And, and that's, that's great fun. Oh, man, I'll, I'll be honest. I love anything like that that's lasted longer than I have, which is most of the universe. But <laughs> I, will say, I will say that whenever I see something like that, like you said, it was 94 years old and it's still running. I love that because yeah. it just, it's like a part of history that is still running. That's it's just yeah. crazy. Uh, it's like reaching into a past that I can't see, but like the remnants of it. Uh, what would you say? And I, I do have that. If you could, you're not bidding here, but if you could, what would be the thing you went for the most? Boy, that's a tough one. I'd probably want to bid on several cars. I could go for the Triumph TR3 because I like English cars. And I would also probably want to get one of the Camaros. The Camaros are, are great cars. And by the way, 2024 will be the last model year for the Chevrolet Camaro. So, and they started in 1967. Oh, so they're not making them anymore. Well, they'll be making them for the 2024 uh, model year, presumably when the GM auto strikes end. But, uh, yeah, that'll be the end of it, and they'll probably be electric after that. Well, that's crazy to think about. And in a way, it kind of, it kind of comes with a bittersweet kind of feeling, right? In one way... You- they're no longer making something that you're so used to, but in another way, what you already have becomes way more unique. Absolutely. No question about it. Um, yeah, it, it's time marches on. And, and by the way, that's one of the reasons people are very interested in these older cars, because you can hold on to a piece of the past, and you can drive that piece of the past and enjoy it. And a lot of people like to tinker with them, you know, as a hobby. So I don't see this... Uh, this hobby declining in the near future, even though an awful lot of the people that come here and bid are older people. Uh, younger folks are beginning to get interested, which is a good thing. That's important for the longevity of the hobby. 
Oh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I love auctions like this. I love antiques. I love things that have lasted the ages of history, which is partially why I kind of jumped on to cover this. If I had the money, I'd gladly bid for some of this stuff. Maybe You think I could pass for a hot shot trying to get my own car? Sure, why not? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, take a look at when you see the crowd here. All walks of life are here, all ages. Most of them a little older than you, though. <laughs> Well, is there anything you'd like to share with our audience before I end the interview? No, it's just uh, I, I'm really delighted to be able to do this because it's it's an opportunity to touch and drive some pretty amazing machinery that normally you only see in the pages of magazines. So it's it's a very exciting time. On the roster includes cars that go back to 1938. 1938. the bidding for a 1964 Chevrolet Impala, the 1972 AMC Javelin SST caught fire while driving into the garage. The fire was taken care of to the humor of many of the attendees, calling it a hot deal and a fire sale. People are still excitingly bidding. All right, so we'll just start with your name and your association with the event. Uh, my name is Tim Marco, and I'm just, I'm actually selling a vehicle here, and I'm looking to possibly buy something. Can you give me a bit of information for a vehicle for the vehicle you're selling? Uh, I have a 1948 GMC five window, three quarter ton pickup truck. Uh, and is it on reserve? Yes. Right, which means that uh, you're expecting a bare minimum. So, what's the bare minimum you're expecting? Well, <clears throat> I have a number in my head of what I feel it's worth that I would need to take to make the truck go away because I don't need to sell it. Um, the reserve I have on it is thirty-eight thousand today. All right, so what makes you choose an auction instead of just selling it? Um, I just think that for this particular example, I'm not really 100% looking to try to move it and sell it. So I thought I would run it through here since there will be a lot of people in the automotive industry and a lot of people that are interested in older cars and trucks that would be here. So the potential for that particular vehicle triggering someone to want to buy it might be here you know on the right day at the right time and what would you what are you looking for to buy here um there's a couple of mustangs that are in there that i might be interested in uh, maybe a couple of the other old pickup trucks and why not just try and find those on the market um well you can uh the problem is is i can come here and i can look at 250 300 vehicles as opposed to driving an hour to look at one I gotta say, this is my first time coming to an auction. It's sure. quite the exciting event, quite exhilarating. Yeah, it will be a two. And once you start seeing some vehicles that are up in the two hundred plus thousand dollars, you'll see a lot of excitement once it starts happening. Really, man, I, it's really uh, interesting to see the uh, the shifts between how much how low something can sell for versus how high. Uh, I'm seeing cars sell for like six thousand, and I'm like, okay, that's a little less than I was expecting. And then I see one with the starting bids twenty thousand dollars, and that took me aback. A lot of it depends on the collectability, the desirability, um, and what the number is, the value on that particular genre of vehicle. Um, as people are getting older, those vehicles are changing. You know, the 55 Chevys and stuff are all still collectible, but people that graduated um, in the late 80s to early 90s to mid 90s, they're looking at the vehicles that were really cool when they were in high school. So, um, you know, the stuff that was cool when I was in high school from 91 to 95, those are the cars that I always thought were unattainable to me. And now that I'm older, those cars are very attainable. So as people get older and as the, um, as the vehicle uh, changes, you know, from what was collectible 20 years ago to what was collectible 10 years ago to what is collectible today, does change. And people get older and you know, people get out of the car game, not necessarily by choice, but, um, you know, everything changes desirability and what you want, maybe what you saw one time, maybe what your grandpa had, you know, there's a lot of different things that come into play for it. Is this the first auction you've been to with the, uh, uh, with this auction industry? No, been to uh, several of them. Yep. What keeps you coming back? I love cars. I love trucks. I love the whole collectability of it. I don't think, I mean, stuff fluctuate, values go up and down, but I think there's always going to be a market for this. And I think the market is really going to be going up once they really start trying to shove this electric vehicle stuff. 
I think it's really going to go up because people are going to want to buy this stuff and keep it in their storage and put it away. Yeah, I actually heard that from a few other people. They say, uh, oh, I don't remember which one. There's one car type that's going to stop being sold in 2024. Uh, and they said even now, if you buy a car from 2022, people are going to want it simply because once that year comes around, it no longer exists. Right inside the door here, there's a purple uh, Dodge Challenger, um, a special edition Hellcat that is a 2023 that sold for $90,000 yesterday. Um, you're not going to be able to buy that car ever again. So next year, that car would probably run through here at 100 to 110, depending upon the, the market next year. And in 10 years, that may be 150, you know. Oh, that is crazy. Do you think the same thing will eventually happen to electric cars? Will they eventually come down the same route or no? I don't know. I'm as I'm trying to be as optimistic as I can about it because I own an automotive repair shop, um, a 14 bay shop. So we work on a little bit of everything. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure that there will be a niche market for them first electric cars that came out, those first ones. But I don't know that the quality of build is there for us to see those vehicles in 30, 40, 50 years where the old cars are still together, as you can see. It's quite surreal to actually see. I'm seeing a bunch of, a bunch of uh, it's like walking through a lot of uh, automotive history sure just is. right in front of your face. I, well, is there anything you'd like to say to our uh, audience before I end the interview? Uh, no, it's just a great thing that people can even just come out and just be a spectator and watch. It's really interesting to, to look at stuff and it sparks memories of things from the past, you know, things that have happened in your life or people that you've seen you know grandpa had that car or something like that so it's a it's a great thing and it's a it's a good thing to be around car people because car people are usually good people all right well thank you for your time i appreciate you doing this interview with us thank you many of these cars come at their own risk as many of the people who restored them have spent a lot more money than they are going to get one car was asking for fifty thousand and only sold for twelve thousand Some of these cars have up to a million dollars in restoration and upkeep and only sell for 50000 All right, we'll just start with your name and uh, what's your association with the event. Uh, my name is John Maslanka. I'm with uh, Hammerdown Auctions slash Hot Rods and Handlebars Depot and Sales. We've been coming up here with these guys uh, trying to support, help them build uh, 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 an auction up here. And uh, they are probably some of the best people, uh, the, the salt of the earth. Uh, I've never had anybody work harder to sell a car than them. Oh, the Remlinger auction place, yeah? Correct, the Remlinger auction. Yeah, these guys are, uh, this is America right here. This is what it's all about. They work hard uh, for what they do because they understand if they don't sell it, they don't make anything. Right, and I see on the, uh, on the, well, I'm sorry, I'm not really sure what this is called, the showing what, run uh, the run list, thank you. Uh, it's, you're not only selling cars here, you're selling like signed posters and portraits and stuff like that. Uh, my first question is, how'd you get your hands on this stuff? Well, there's a consigner. This is the second time I know that they've done it with uh, some of the uh, art, uh, signature art. Uh, we call it memorabilia. Um, and um, the guy wanted to consign it. The cool thing about it, he does it all no reserve because he understands the value of the auction and the power of no reserve. And what does that mean to have no reserve? That means that it's selling regardless if it brings $10,000 or it brings a dollar. Oh, that's crazy. All right, so... Are you uh, trying to get something here at the auction, or are you just here to help run it? We brought 10 cars up. So, yeah, we had five running yesterday, and uh, we sold three out of the five, which is pretty good. It's 70%, and then we've got uh, five more running today. And how, uh, what would you say is the average uh, price a lot of this stuff sells for? I think probably if they went through their averages, it'd probably be... Maybe in that, uh, I'll bet they were probably 62 to 67% yesterday. And is this something that happens often, or is this the first time? Because uh, this is the first time I'm hearing about this auction, which is why I came here to cover it. How long has this been happening? They've been uh, doing this at this location um, for probably five years now, and they do it three times a year. Uh, do, you, do you know when, uh, what other times during the year it happens? Yeah, they have a spring sale that they do, um, I believe it's in June. Then they had a summer sale in August, and then we have the fall sale in October. Well, I can see a lot of people here. They're clearly looking forward to getting something here. What would you say is the most, uh, I, I guess, 
What would you say is the most competitive uh, uh, um, memorabilia sold here during the auction? Uh, a lot of the sign stuff. Uh, I know they had some paint Manning stuff. Uh, one of the guys was uh, buying Taylor Swift for his girlfriend, otherwise she sold him not to come home. Uh, but the online is what makes it all work. A lot of times at an auction, you know, you need two horses in the race. But with the online, what they provide, you've got uh, actually four avenues for the consigners. You've got uh, proxy bid, you've got bid to buy, uh, you've got the on-site buyers, and then you have people that call in on phone bids. And do all of those happen at the same time? Everything happens simultaneous, so there's a lot of communication. And if you're here today to watch it, you'll see the ring men working themselves, and you know they'll let you know what the bid, and yeah, you know, so we have a good time with it. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Is there anything you'd like to share with our audience before the interview's over? Come on out, come on out. Bid often, bid a lot, buy what you want, because it only happens one time. You know, this is an emotion. People buy this because of uh, what they used to have. So that's what it looks for, and that's the best part of an auction is watching the prices go because you got two folks that want something that they had when they were younger. Thank you so much for doing this interview with us. Not a problem. Thanks for letting me uh, give you the opportunity. Any questions you got, just give us a shout. This is truly surreal, reaching into a piece of history I've never seen. Cars and artifacts that existed long before I did, but then again, so has most of the universe. It's just amazing to see this stuff. Thanks for tuning in to Jim Remlinger's Collect the Car Auction today on Culture Click. To be in attendance next year, check out RemlingerAuctions.com. To keep up on all things Winona in the surrounding area, tune in to Culture Click, Thursdays at 12.30, right here on 89.5 KQAL, online at kqal.org, the KQAL app, and on your smart speaker. I'm Ventures here, and we've just listened in to a great collector car auction with Giovanni Bermudez. Culture Click is made possible by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Creating cultural awareness and understanding. You've been listening to Culture Click. Support for Culture Click is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Culture Click is produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. For more information, look us up on the web at kqal.org. And thanks for listening to Culture Click. <laughs>